Good morning, boys and girls, moms and dads. No better place to be than at the Six Bridges Book Festival this morning at 9.30. We're at Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing, and we're doing our traditional Baobab story time. So we're glad you're here. We're thankful to the library system for having this festival virtual. We're on point. This morning, we are celebrating the plant doctor, and our special guest author is Wesley Peters. And he has some guests today, and he's going to introduce himself and let you know what's going on with the plant doctor. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Six Bridges Book Festival, and thank you, Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing, for holding this virtual event. I'm very excited because not only am I presenting, but I have two thought leaders with me, Brooklyn and Kyla, who are going to help me conduct creativity. So. Ms. Hearn asked me to come on this show today and talk about The Plant Doctor. And the crazy thing about The Plant Doctor is I wrote it in 2017. Um, yeah, so I wrote the book in 2017. I came out with it in 2018, and here we are today. So just a little bit about The Plant Doctor. It's about a boy named Ivory who falls off the monkey bars because he's playing too much and he's doing too much, and he hurts his mouth. Kyla in Brooklyn, um, have y'all ever had a playground injury and what was it? Well, when I was in third grade, uh, I had injured myself when I had just sharpened a pencil. So when I sharpened the pencil, I tripped over something and I dropped it. And when I dropped it, it went through my shoe and to my foot. When I picked up the pencil, I didn't notice that the pencil was out of it, but when I noticed it was, I know I remember I remembered that I had dropped it, so I took off my shoe and I looked at my foot and I saw that the pencil web was in it. So then I went down to the nurse barefooted and I talked to her about what happened and she got it out for me. Hmm. So Kyla had pencil lead in her foot. Brooklyn, what about you? Any playground injuries for you? Well, I like to walk around barefoot, don't like wearing shoes, and so sometimes when I'm on the playground. When I was like in fifth grade and down there, um, I used to walk around the playground with no shoes on. And the worst injury I got on the playground or at school is most likely getting wood chips stuck in my foot. Mm. And they were always easy to come out. So it just never went, the pain never lasted more than five minutes. So that's it. So Brooklyn and Kyla, like Ivory, were doing too much on the playground. They didn't wear their shoes. Ivory was playing too much on the monkey bars and he hurts his mouth and he has to go to the dentist. Let me pause briefly to say that we are under the Baobab tree, which is the tree of knowledge. It is a pyramid staple. So during this conversation, we hope everybody at home gets a whole bunch of knowledge from us today. So Ivory falls off the monkey bars and has to go to the bathroom because he's so hurt and his mom shows up and his mom is like, dude, I told you about trying to impress Michelle outside and doing too much on the monkey bars and on the swings going down the slide too fast. And that's why you hurt your mouth. So I would be like, ah. he's like us with our mask on, covering his mouth. So he has to go to the dentist. And on the way to the dentist, he sees a neighborhood that he's not used to seeing. He sees nice buildings and swings and slides, and he's like, hmm, this is interesting. So at the dentist, everything is okay, and Ivory's cheesing, bright, and after I used to go to the dentist, my mom didn't have the best habit. She used to give me like chocolate chip cookies right after I got my cavities fixed, so I ended up back in the dentist. So Ivory's all good though. And on the way home from the dentist, He's paying closer attention to his neighborhood because y'all remember on the way to the dentist, all the neighborhood was nice, nice slides. It was parks to play in and things like that. So Ivory's paying closer attention to the neighborhood by his school and by his home. And he's like, it looks different, right? He's like, it's boarded up houses over here. It's abandoned houses, it's rocks in the windows. It doesn't look like people are paying too much attention to the neighborhood that he lives in. So the next day, 
Ivory goes to his grandma's house. Y'all like going to y'all's grandma's house? Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> of course. Why you say that? Um, every Sunday, um, I'd always ask my grandmother if I could go to her house because she just made, she had a bunch of activities to do and she was just the fit and fun grandma who likes to do everything at once. And so it was always fun to go to her house. Okay. Cool, cool. So Ivory loves going to his grandma's house too because grandma always tells interesting stories and she always has some type of dessert. This time, she just so happens to make Ivory's favorite dessert, which is chocolate pop, right? So Ivory stole a little piece of me because that's my favorite dessert. So grandma made some chocolate pop for Ivory and she's like, did you lose any teeth? Are you okay? Are you gonna even get to have some of this chocolate pop? And I was like, Grandma, Dennis said I'd be okay. Kyla, what's your favorite uh, dessert that your grandma makes? I heard something about it. My grandma makes this really good dessert called Honey Bun Cake, and she makes it for all of us, and it's really, really good to have it. What's your grandma's name? <laughs> grandma Nene. Grandma Nene, we need some of that Honey Bun Cake. We could have had it backstage today. And, and Brooklyn, does your grandma make any desserts? <laughs> no, my grandma doesn't bake. When I'm over at her house, I'm the one usually baking, but she only has like boxes, boxes of cake mix just because she knows I love to bake and um, she's really fit. So she doesn't eat a bunch of desserts and anything. So I mean, we're going to leave you alone today, dear grandma. <laughs> we're going to leave you alone. But Nene, we need some of that honey <laughs> bun cake. So Grandma's like, I made this chocolate pie. Ivory, I don't know if you'll be able to have some. I'm obviously like, no, nah, I'm okay, Granny. I can have some chocolate pie, but I have one question. And Ivory's like, why does my neighborhood look different? Y'all remember? Why does my neighborhood look different than the neighborhood by the dentist? And so Grandma is a lot like my mom. She doesn't answer questions. She doesn't say yes or no. Grandma mm -hmm. takes Ivory to the garden. And she's like, your neighborhood is like my garden. And she's like, you see these flowers right here? These are called bell flowers. These are grandma's favorite flowers. Do y'all grandma have a garden at home? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What do they, what do they grow? Um, my grandma, she mostly grows strawberries. I haven't seen any other ones. Strawberries. Okay, what about you, Kyla? My grandmother has elephant ears and her flower bed. She has bushes and she has plants. Okay, cool. So grandma, Ivory's grandma is like, I take extremely good care of these flowers. And just a quick story. Last week I went down to Pine Bluff, Arkansas. With one of my friends, Miss Ivory, she used to work with the Dunbar Gardens over here and I just wanted to learn a little bit more about gardening myself since I wrote on the subject and Miss Audrey broke down gardening to me and I saw how hard it was to actually tend to a garden, how consistent you have to be. So grandma's like, I, I take extra good care of these flowers. I make sure no thorns, no weeds, no pests, no pests, nothing gets inside of these flowers. Nothing messes up their root system. And because of that, do you see how beautiful they are? And Ivory's like, Grandma, I kind of follow you, but I don't really like flowers. But Grandma's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you see these flowers on the other side of the garden? And Ivory's like, yeah, I see them. They don't look too good, right? And Grandma's like, yeah, I haven't taken as good care of this side of the garden. I was so... I was paying so much attention to the bell flowers on this side of the garden that I neglected this side. So I was like, okay, I'm kind of getting it. And then he asked the question of the century. He said, is my neighborhood like the garden? Is my neighborhood like the flowers that look sick? So again, grandma doesn't say yes or no. What she does is she tells this story of the plant doctor. Have y'all heard of the plant doctor? Um, you have? All right, don't cheat. Don't cheat. So grandma tells this story about the plant doctor who was George Washington Carver. And grandma says it was this man named George Washington Carver. And he was born in 
1864, perhaps, perhaps 1865. And by 1896, he was like this famous gardener and he knew plants very well. And there was this man named Booker T. Washington who was all the way in Alabama. And George Washington Carver was all the way in Missouri, or he was in Iowa at the time, I'm sorry. He was all the way in Iowa. And Booker T. Washington heard about George Washington Carver. And Booker T. Washington was building up a school at the time called Tuskegee. And they needed somebody to run the agriculture department. They needed somebody to work with the plants and teach students how to plant new things, right? So Booker T. Washington got on the train and went all the way from Alabama to Iowa because this dude, the plant doctor, George Washington Carver, he was just so cold at what he does, right? So he's like, I gotta have you at Tuskegee. You have to come down here. You have to come and take care of these plants and you have to teach these students. So George Washington Carver hopped on the train and he went to Alabama, to Tuskegee. Y'all know what he saw when he got there? He saw a whole bunch of trash heaps, right? He saw piles and piles and layers of trash. And George Washington Carver could have been like, what am I gonna do with all this trash? He could have said, I can't do anything with this. But instead, he got his students and guess what they did? I was supposed to say, what? Oh, what did he do? What did he do? <laughs> <laughs> so he went to the trash heaps with his students and he literally started digging in the trash heaps. And out of the trash heaps, he found manure and he found, uh, he found cardboard and he found old banana peels and old apple rinds and old chickens and he put it in the garden to cultivate the ground. So after a while, all the Tuskegee was doing so much better because of George Washington Carver. That's why they called him a plant doctor. So Ivory's like, okay, okay. I hear what you're saying, Grandma. George Washington Carver did that. And that was because he was grown and he had all these ideas and he had all these experiences. I'm just a kid, right? And Grandma's like, yeah, you're a kid. But just like my thought leaders today, grandma said, it's not about age. It's about commitment and dedication. And it takes commitment and dedication to be a plant doctor. So that's just a little bit about the plant doctor. Um, you can get this book at Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing or any, any library in the Central Arkansas library system. But here's our segue. I think Kyla has some questions that she wanted to ask today. I wanna know, um, I wanna know why did you write this book? Okay, that's a great question. I wrote this book, um, so first off, I'm from Little Rock. Um, when I was in elementary school, when I was in Ivory's uh, grade, when I was his age, I went to Carver Magnet Elementary School. So I grew up in a neighborhood in Southwest. So, Every day when my mom and my dad would take me to school, I would see all different parts of the city, right? So I would start off seeing neighborhoods that look like Ivory's neighborhood with boarded up houses, abandoned houses and things of that nature. But as I got closer to downtown and even different places, I would see different parts of uh, the city that look nicer. And so I had this question, why does one neighborhood look better than the other neighborhood? And I always felt like everybody deserves um, good things, right? So that's kind of why I wrote the book. Well, I have another question. All right. I don't know, why does George Washington Carver value? Well, that's actually an extremely good question. The reason why George Washington Carver inspires me, I was actually reading up about him yesterday. So he was born, he didn't actually know his birthday, right? Because he was born into slavery. So they say he was born in between the years of 1860 and 1865. Well, that puts him right in the middle of a civil war, right? So George Washington Carver was born in the midst 
of a global pandemic, right? So he was born in the midst of chaos, in the midst of turmoil, and they're fighting left to right. So he's born in 1860, between 1860 and 1865, when he was kidnapped in 1865 by some slave raiders in Missouri, and he was taken to Arkansas. So George Washington Carver, um, his slave owners had to come find him, right? So I wrote about him because of just the turmoil that he was uh, that he was born into and the triumphs that he had to travel through. So George Washington Carver traveled a lot of times on foot to be educated, right? He would go to different places in Missouri. and He would go to different places in Iowa because he was trying to seek out an education. So I was like, okay, if this dude thought that he could learn, if this dude thought that even though he was born into slavery, even though he was born in the midst of a global pandemic, that he could still become all these great things, that's the message that we need to know. That's the message that we need to hear. So that's why George Washington Carver kind of inspires me. Well, are you writing anything else? Oh, wow. So, yes. The first, okay. So I came with this book. As soon as I got it, I started going to these schools, right? And the first question the kids asked me, they didn't say congratulations. They didn't say good job. You did it. They didn't say any of that. They said, "Will well, your next book coming out. And I was like, okay, y'all love me now. So yes, I have uh, new books. I'm always looking for new illustrators. So if you're an illustrator, let me know. But yes, I have a new book. Um, I have a book called Brooklyn's in the House. It's not named after you, Brooklyn. <laughs> but I have this new book called Brooklyn's in the House. It will be releasing in 2021. It's not for kids, but yes, I do have more books um, in the work. Okay. Yeah, so other than that, um, we have other work too. So before the pandemic started, uh, we were doing a stage play. Um, Jay Mongo was directing the play about the book, The Plant Doctor. And today we have Brooklyn with us who was playing Michelle. So Brooklyn, if you could let us know your experience um, just with the stage play. How was that? How was practice? How was everything going before the pandemic started? So um, I've been acting for five years and all and when I first found out about the play, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it because I wasn't really sure what it was about. And then learning what it was about, of course, I was just like, I guess I'll do it. And so auditioning was really fun. I mean, it wasn't as tense. It was really easy. It was just like so chill and it wasn't like all stiff and like competition. It was just like, like, just chilling out, hanging with friends. And so I thought that was fun. And practice is also chill. Um, it breaks you out of your bubble and everyone is so friendly. So it's just like, you're talking to people that you just met, but you already best friends. And I just honestly love that. And so um, at, um, auditioning was pretty fun. The practices were really fun, um, but it was also, you're bursting you out of your bubble. So I mean, all of that was the play, even though we haven't got to like perform it, all the practices and making new friends, that was the best part about it. Okay, and I'm glad you mentioned that it burst people out of that bubble, it brought them out of their shells. Cause we have Kyla with me today. Um, and Kyla is like one of my favorite people when she isn't looking at me with her desk there. And one time, I can't remember, it was a couple months after I came out with my book, and Kyla was like, Wesley, did you know I have a book? I'm like, you don't have no book. <laughs> and she's like, yes, I do. So I said, send it to me. So I'm like, this girl could write. I read it on the Google Docs. So I'm like, this girl could write. So Kyla, when did you start writing? And why do you like writing so much? 
Well, <laughs> well, first I want to say is that my favorite subject is writing. Okay. Well, really at school, English and reading is my favorite class because it's something I enjoy doing and I'm very interested in it. And also, I just started writing ever since I was a little kid because my auntie Christy, <clears throat> she used to always give me a piece of paper and make me write about my day and everything. And I used to be interested in it all the time. And she, she used to buy me notebooks and everything. Basically, like, to write a diary about my days when I was little and everything. So I really like doing it. <clears throat> well, and I used to write it all the time at school. And most of them, most of the writings I did were for assignments I had to do for school. So I just saved them. Okay. So Auntie Christy is who we would call a plant doctor in the way in which she is still, she nurtures, she provides resources to help people grow. And that's an interesting thing that you said because plant doctors are very important to the community, right? So if you think about somebody like Miss Garbo Hearn or even Mr. Benito or Toya Stewart or y'all's parents, right? Miss Christine and Miss Robin, if you think about these people who care and cultivate the community, these are people who are plant doctors and it takes a special kind of effort. Like grandma was saying, um, with her different sides of the garden, right? She cares for this side of the garden. These are her bellflowers. These are her babies. Therefore, she takes the special time to nurture and to protect them. So that's just like us, Brooklyn, with your acting, Kyla, with your writing. It takes a certain type of dedication, right? Grandma was talking about the commitment that it takes to actually grow in these fields. So if you're at home, right, and you consider being a writer, even if you say, I don't like writing like that, I don't like reading, I always tell kids, right? If you read and if you write, everything starts with writing. Everything starts with writing. So if you like TV shows and movies and even video games, they all start with basic writing. So make sure, make sure, make sure that you continue to write. And without further ado, we would like to bring back to the stage Ms. Garbo Hearn. So let's everybody give a virtual hug and a virtual applause to Wesley, Kyla, and Brooklyn. So that hug, that virtual. So at Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing, we encourage we are enthusiastic about reading and we have our traditional baobab tree that we had created for our space. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we got to fix the camera so you can, but you have to come and see it. And we're open every day from 10 to 3 and we encourage social distancing. We encourage mask wearing and of course, washing your hands. We're in the middle of a pandemic, but that doesn't stop you from reading. So we are very excited about having Wesley here today. We encourage, we support Arkansas authors. And once a month, we do a Baobab story time. So next month, our story time will be with Maria Hoskins, who's also an Arkansas author. And our traditional story time is Grandma's Thanksgiving dinner. So this will be our fifth year for celebrating Thanksgiving the Saturday before Thanksgiving, of course, because we she does a lot of uh, sharing and caring about what happens at the table. So the other thing we do here is manners. Manners are very important. And one of the things you got to make sure you grow up, you grow up using good manners. The other piece is we encourage using the Central Arkansas library system. Look around you. How many of you in the room have a library card? Everybody raises their hands because you know what? A library card is better than a driver's license because you can use the library whenever you want. And guess what? The library is free, right? You can get any book, digital information, all types of information. So the library is your friend and it's a good friend to a bookstore because guess what would happen if you didn't have a library? You'd have to buy every book in the bookstore, right? And you don't want every book in a bookstore. You want to be able to go into a bookstore and create your very own library. That's why library and bookstores are good friends. So definitely, if you don't have a library card, 
boys and girls, tell your mom and your dad to take you to the library and get a library card. And moms and dads, if you don't have a library card, you got to get one as well. So thank you so much to the Six Bridges Book Festival for allowing us this opportunity to share our Baobab story time. So I'm going to turn it back over to Wesley because I know he's got some other gems to tell you because we encourage young people and we're excited about having Brooklyn and Kyla and we want you to keep reading and keep writing. So Wesley, take it away. So we're going to keep reading and we're going to keep writing. We're going to keep reading and we're going to keep writing. So <laughs> if you're at home right now, I need you to repeat that after me. So when I say we're going to keep reading, y'all going to say we're going to keep reading. And when I say we're going to keep writing, y'all going to say we're going to keep writing. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? You cool? You cool? So we're going to keep reading. We're going to keep reading. Uh-uh. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So if you at home right now, you playing games like Brooklyn and Kyle, I need you to quit yeah. playing those games like that. So we're going to say we're going to keep reading. 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 And we're going to keep writing. We're going to keep writing. We're going to keep reading. We're going to keep reading. And we're going to keep writing. We're going to keep writing. One more time. We're going to keep reading. We're going to keep reading. And we're going to keep writing. And we're going to keep writing. So last, 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 but not least, and I've already said it, I'm just repeating myself because that's just sometimes what we need. We need somebody to repeat information to us so we might forget Last, but certainly not least, I want y'all to simply remember what it takes. Just remember what it takes. Beauty doesn't necessarily come overnight. Beauty is a process. It's not just about planting seeds. I thought it was just about planting seeds. I found me a backyard and I started planting seeds. I started planting seeds and then guess what? The weeds came and I didn't know that it wasn't the plant. So I let the weeds grow with the plant. And then guess what? The thorns came and I wasn't there to get the thorns, right? And then guess what? The raccoons and the possum came and I wasn't there to stop the raccoons and the possum. So when I came back home, my garden was looking like that. I had a big bite in the tomato. The possum just came and ate my tomato and left. I'm sleep. Right? So all I'm trying to say is with our gardens, with our skills, reading, writing, we have to cultivate. We have to make sure that we're taking time to nourish these things. Because if we don't nourish these things, it's going to look like the neighborhood that Ivory School is in or grandma's flowers that look sick. And as plant doctors, we have something to say about that. It's our job to be committed. It's our job to be dedicated. So that's our pledge today. We're gonna to keep reading. And we're gonna keep reading. And we're gonna keep writing. And we're gonna keep writing. Thank y'all so much for y'all's time today. And we appreciate y'all. Keep reading and keep writing.